So, classic fresh servers are coming with Wrath. Completely empty servers, you can start on the pre-patch. Nothing! So what's the best approach to generating gold if you're gonna play on one of those servers? Well, let's talk about that. So, exceedingly obvious, of course, these servers will have nothing on day one. Because no one will have played there yet. There's zero gold in existence, zero materials available on day one when these open on the pre-patch. So that means that both generating raw gold, so you can buy expensive stuff from the vendors, vendor materials, do repairs, flight paths, um, anything, and material generation, generating materials so that you can level your own trade skills, potentially make money from selling profession materials to others, and getting materials to craft with if you want to make money with crafting professions eventually. Uh, <clears throat> and both of these things are much more important than they necessarily are in um, if you're playing on the already existing servers, because on the existing servers there's already tons of, of gold in the game, so you can get at that with multiple different approaches. And there's also tons of materials available for sale, as you can see there's literally hundreds if not thousands of ancient ly lichen for sale. Um, on my realm, although it's a little expensive right now. Um, but you don't have that at all, which means that helping generate materials and raw gold is very, very important to get your server going and to get your own economy going. Um, so there are some, of course, long term, after a little while, it will be essentially saturated, also depending on how fast and how many bots join the server. Uh, obviously, botting on that server will likely be very profitable because no one else is generating materials. Um, but uh, beside the, besides all that, generating your own materials is going to help you accelerate and, and get ahead. So you want to gather while leveling. You want to be herbalist and mining when leveling, pretty much. Um, and then you can power level your crafting professions once you hit max level. Um, so if you're, for instance, planning to go one of the popular BIS combinations, engineering jewel crafting on your main, then take herbalism mining. And then you can sell your herbs to other players. Or you can save them if you're planning to level inscription on an alt. Um, and then you save all of your ores that you get while leveling and turn them into bars as needed. Um, and then once you hit max level, you can use that to level your crafting professions if you're going to swap. That way you'll save some gold or you'll have generated some gold. You can also, of course, spend some time farming with your farming professions before you swap. Uh, this is mostly if you like farming, but farming will definitely be a lot more profitable, relatively speaking, um, on these fresh realms because there's just no materials available on day one, so you need to generate a large supply of materials. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to be a, a very important part of the economy early on. Uh, both classic and TBC materials are going to be selling. A lot of people will want to level professions, and then they might want to get a professional, get the inscription going, get everything maxed out, which means there's going to be a significant need for all of the leveling materials. Um, so even, even if you're not planning to use the materials you pick yourself while leveling, you can sell them, and that will accelerate to you towards your mounts, towards everything else. Of course, there's going to be a little bit limited prices, because people won't have that much gold, but that's what, uh, what you want to do. Now, as always, being first to market is going to matter. If you're the first one with a very desirable recipe, you're going to make a lot of money. Uh, in the pre-patch, some examples would be getting access to the Netherweave and imbued Netherweave bag recipes. Because um, everyone is going to want to go into Wrath with the biggest bags possible. And of course, these servers open on the pre-patch, which means that you have a while, a little while. We don't know exactly how much time. But you have some time to level, get some recipes and stuff. Uh, there might be some other items that are useful for leveling, but overall, I think that of the recipes that are available before Wrath launches, the bags are the main one. Um, and then, of course, once the Wrath expansion hits, then racing to level 80 and getting the relevant Wrath recipes is going to be the, the name of the game, but that's not going to be different from a, a non-fresh server. That's the exact same dynamics at that point, because as far as Wrath goes, we don't have any materials on the non-fresh servers either. Now, another thing that matters, raw gold. As I said, you need both to generate as much raw gold as possible and materials as possible. Um, this is going to help you out a lot. So we're going to pull out all of the, all of the old little tricks um, there's a bunch of micro optimizations that you can do that's worth it. Um, rogues, remember to mac macro pickpocket into every one of your stealth abilities. That's where you get some free gold when fighting humanoids. Um, and just do quests, pick up. If you grind, make sure you focus on grinding somewhere where there's a lot of raw gold drops. 
um, if that's your jam and just minimizing your expenditures don't spend gold on anything that you'll replace quickly probably don't need to spend gold on leveling gear you can easily level with just the stuff you get from craft quests um, and there are some other like small tricks tips and tricks here and there uh, make sure you vendor everything pick everything up um, and just just get your gold going. I don't know of any specific like raw gold generation that matters too much while leveling. You just want to level quickly though. Uh, because the higher level you are, the more gold you get from mobs, the more gold you get from quests. Um, so the better everything are. And if you can ha hit level 70 rel relatively quickly, um, you can do stuff like the Sunwell dailies. Um, not all of them are going to be open, but that's going to be able to generate some, some raw gold that you can take with you into Wrath. Uh, gonna accelerate your economy a little bit or you can just farm uh, max level materials but definitely depending on the prices figure out what's the most profitable way on these realms we don't really know that yet uh, because the limit of how much gold is in the game is gonna limit prices a little bit um, but on the other side like the utility of having max professions is super super high so people are gonna be willing to spend a very substantial portion of the gold they have um, <clears throat> but you will have to pull out all the stops going looking for gold in literally every place you can if you want to get uh, max level and perhaps have epic flying going before uh, we get into wrath one thing that's going to make it uh, definitely not the focus is to get specific like end game tbc recipes in the pre-patch that's a complete waste of time and money uh, focus on only on stuff that's useful to levelers and um, that's the main thing uh, because these servers are not going to have any tbc end game at all that does not mean that TBC materials are going to be useless. On the contrary, they're going to be extremely sought after because everyone's going to want to level 300 to 375. Uh, but don't go looking for hard to get endgame recipes. Focus on stuff that's going to help people level. Uh, focus on stuff that's going to give you more raw gold or give you more materials faster. Get those onto the auction house or save them for when you're planning to level your own professions. And enjoy the ride. Good luck.